We have made our mobile hardware integration plugin able to print labels on the Zebra ZQ630 RFID and compatible label printers, including reading and writing UHF RFID tags embedded in the labels. GoNector prints labels directly via Utooth using the Zebra programming language known as ZPL, so you don't have to rely on Wi-Fi or AirPrint. Printing labels with GoNector is fast, reliable, and your scripts can have 100% control on what's printed and where. You can print text in various sizes, place it precisely where you want, and even rotate it as necessary. You can even print different barcodes and 2D codes without having to render them in FileMaker. When printing a label with an embedded RFID tag, you can automatically pair the RFID with the data by either reading back the tag's unique ID, pre-filled in the EPC memory bank by the vendor, or overwrite it with your own identification status. Now let's take a look at how easily I can implement label printing with GoNector into my own custom FileMaker app. Here I have a simple assets inventory app and I want to make it able to print labels for my assets. Each asset item has a code, name, photo, short description, and storage location. I also want each label to show a QR code that resolves to a web page URL, so I have a calculation field for that here. I don't want to worry about defining an ID scheme that wouldn't collide with other third-party tags, so I decided to use the IDs pre-filled in the tags by the manufacturer. I will create a new field to hold that ID, and just for the purpose of this demo, I will add it to my asset detail layout. In real life, I don't need to see the ID, it's sufficient for me to know that it's there. To be able to actually print the label and read its RFID tags data, I will add a new button. Let's call it Print RFID Label, and a new script to take care of the printing. I first need to make sure I am connected to the printer. I'll use the GoNector underscore get function to check whether there is a Zebra printer already connected. The Connected Devices selector gives me the list of all connected devices of the selected type. If there is no Zebra printer connected, I will try to connect to the first one available using the GoNector Connect script step. I don't have multiple Zebra printers, so I can keep the code relatively simple. The GoNector underscore get function with the devices selector will give me a list of all available Zebra printer devices, and the get value function will help me to extract the first one in the unlikely case of multiple devices appearing. I also need to capture the result and handle any error as it occurs. When the connection fails, GoNector will return a non-zero value as a result, so I can easily check for it and display a dialog to the user. I can use the GoNector underscore get function with the last error message selector to get a human-readable description of the error. Once I'm connected to the printer, I can start sending data to it. It's good to start with defining the principal area to avoid printing outside of the label. I will use the GoNector set script and principal area as a selector. The option parameter expects device name for any device-specific settings. I will be using labels 100 mm wide by 50 mm tall with 8 dots per millimeter. This translates to a printable area of 800 by 400. Now I am ready to add the data. I have prepared the label design on a separate layout called Label. As you can see here, I want to print a QR code in four text fields. To make it easier to figure out the right coordinates for each item, I have made the layout size in points match the printing area size in dots, that is, 800 by 400 points. Let's start by adding the QR code. By selecting the item, I can see it's placed 30 points from the left border and 30 points from top. So I will go back to my script and add a GoNector print code script step. I'll give the device name from the printer variable, specify QR code as barcode type, and get the barcode data from my URL calculation. Since I don't want to print the label until I have all the items ready, I will use the buffer print mode. Now I can specify the barcode coordinates I got from the label layout. I also want to adjust the barcode size, so I will add the GoNector set script with the barcode scaling selector. I'll try to start with the scaling factor of 8. Now let me add the script steps to print the text fields as well. I will use the GoNector print text script step for this, again taking device name from the printer variable, 
text data from the corresponding field, and coordinates from my label layout. I also need to add extra Go Nectar set scripts to configure the font size for each field. Here, I will set the font width and height separately, making the text appear bold. It may not be easy to directly calculate the best value from the font size and points on the layout, so you may have to try a few different values to find the right one. Now I can simply duplicate and adjust these script steps for the remaining text fields. I can replace the font width and font height selectors with a single font size setting to set both width and height to the same value. Once I'm done preparing all the data in the buffer, I can finally print the label and read its RFID data back to my database. I will use the GoNectar print RFID script step, again, taking device name from the printer variable. I will ask for the data to be returned in hexadecimal format, and by not providing any data, I will let the plugin know that I just want to read the existing data from the RFID tag. I will get it stored directly to the RFID field, and that's it. Now I can just commit the record and my script is done. So let's try how it works on my iPhone. I can't imagine this being any easier, but even if it's not easy enough for you, don't hesitate to contact us and we'll help you to get it to work.